Chicago City Limits. And in order to present a movie, we would like to make you feel as if you're in an actual movie theater. So if I could trouble the tallest people here to move in front of the shortest people, we'd be ready to get on your way. What I do need you to do is uh, create an original title for a film, one that's never been done before. Make up a title if you want. Ring, of fire. Ring a fire, I heard. Ring a fire, and I also need an inanimate object. Bagel. A bagel. Uh, Bob Dole, we've already established, is inanimate. A uh, bagel will be our inanimate object, and I, uh, I need the cast out on stage, and for the cast, for all you, I need four different styles of movies, types, genres, different kinds of films you could see. How about a movie style? No noir! Sci-fi, no coward! No noir! Romance! Silent! And silent! We have uh, a director. I could do silent porno. If you want. No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> we have a director to tie all these different styles together. Please welcome the director of Chicago City Limits, Paul Zuckerman. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't get up. And now, if the cast will recite their respective cinematographic styles. Science fiction. No coward. Romance. Silent. <laughs> With our object being a bagel, we present Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire. It had been three months since I had been at Beastly Manor, and I did miss Charlotte every day of my life. I somehow had to get back there, but I couldn't get back until I had earned enough money to be the kind of man that she admired, for I know that she had grown up in the lap of luxury, surrounded by wealth. How could I, a mere stable boy, ever hope to impress her? I had to find some way to earn more intergalactic credits. I suppose I could sell my land cruiser, but a simple guy like me herding Bantha across the countryside <laughs> can't possibly hope to impress a woman like that. Or can I? I stayed up all night thinking about it, wondering if I go to the spaceport. Will I improve my station, and where will I find a truly dry martini? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it came to me in a flash. City boy, city boy, just go. Go to a home and pose as a butler, and then when you get to your father's good grace, And a mustache and fake makeup so that they wouldn't recognize me as their stable boy. Yes, I, I tried to do many things to make myself look different. I walked with a limp. And I would occasionally have a bit of gymnastics, like doing a flip. Sometimes I would just twitch uncontrollably anything so that they wouldn't recognize me. And he informed me that my Jedi mind tricks would not work on him. He had a little creature that sat behind him going, <laughs> Oh, it was terribly intimidating. I said, I've come for your daughter, the princess. Please, please, give me her hand in marriage. I do love her auburn hair, her bright blue eyes, the way her lips move back and forth, especially when it's windy and they move in all directions. He looks at me with scorn. But you threw me out of the house where I landed. Right in the mud. Goodness, I said. What a fall, and it isn't even autumn. Oh. And that's when I saw her. There she was in the yard. The beautiful woman practicing with her lightsaber. Oh, it was wonderful. But I knew that if I approached her, Mr. Beasley would send me to Penal Colony 9. <laughs> I hid behind a horse and brayed gently, hoping to get her to look in my direction to look upon her beautiful face. But the horse kicked out behind me and flung me across the stable. I was discovered. I had to think quickly. I said, Quick, Charlotte, I love you. And I jumped on top of the horse and I scooped her up. And we rode. And she can't hear me because her arm is on my neck. And we rode and rode and rode until we entered the forbidden. 
in post-apocalyptic area. Oh, God. She's frightening me. She's crouching me. She said, darling, why are you doing this? It's a neighbor boy. And I said, I'm trying to give you a stable relationship. Oh. <laughs> we got closer into the strange area. My hands grew clammy. And the mutants jumped out from behind rocks. They're horrible robots with 35 arms and eyes aglow with anger began stumbling toward us. They began to attack us and to shoot us with fiery rays. I took my sword out of the scabbard and I started battling all of them. I said I will do anything to protect the honor of this fair woman. And I sliced each one of them with Z's like Zorro, with X's like Exxon, with... Z the least important. So I went back and scratched out the Z's and made them A's. Oh. <laughs> and then I wrote a love poem on their chests to Charlotte. You are beautiful as the sky. I am one lucky guy. Why, oh, why? <laughs> Quite a long time in the writing, but she was very impressed. She was looking at the note when suddenly something else caught her eye. Yes, it was a broken bottle. And it was in the hand of her father. He had chased after us all the way. He came at me. He said, I shall kill you for taking my sweet Charlotte. But then I noticed for a moment he wasn't munching on anything at all. So to distract the chap, I pulled a freshly baked bagel out of my pocket and waved it around. The sesame seeds wiggling and tightening in the hot bread. And damn, if he didn't drop the bottle and begin munching away merrily. made for the spaceport. Yes, we went as quickly as we could. And when we arrived there, it was a hellish scene of bizarre cheap puppets. Yes, <laughs> and playing with musical instruments. And I asked if there was someone there who could wet us, so that we could never be torn asunder. And indeed there was. There was one man who stepped forward. And I said, could you wet us? And he threw some water upon us. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> and then, wet us with a deep heart. And he put our hands on top of one hand, her white, milky hand, her soft skin, her beautiful Lee Presson. Nail, that's not funny, but that's really all you can say after Lee Presson. <laughs> <laughs> and there we were, waiting to be wed, and he uttered something that only an android would utter. Yes, it was him. It was an android, a horrible android. And so I attacked him, and I wrestled him to the ground. We went through an incredible fight. His head popped off, and I reached in for his innards, and I pulled him out, and I said, we don't need this android to wet us. No, we just need each other. Hold me, Charlotte. And I took some gasoline that I had, and I threw it around myself. And then I lit it, and no one could come and enter the circle. Yes, we were wed in a ring of fire. <laughs> <laughs>